Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Thomas Peterson and Jakob Larsen. Good evening everyone and welcome back to the Rocket Shop. Um, today we're here standing on the uh, upper levels of uh, the CS workshop and this is because we're going to, uh, to talk with, uh, with Bo tonight. Uh, Bo is part of our electronics department so uh, I'd like to, to welcome Bo here tonight. So uh, just for the audience, Bo, uh, a little more about the electronics, but you have a specific focus here, mostly at, at Copenhagen Suborbitals. Well, I'm the, one of the guys who does the, the circuit board design and also the mounting of the components on the circuit boards. I'm the, the one on, on that part. Mm. And then also I'm the main responsible guy responsible for uh, wiring and connectors and putting the, those together. Mm. Well, usually, of course, we have all these electronics in our uh, rockets, and of course, they need to be wired together, but I mean, that's just wires, right? Well, more or less, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, challenges with the vibration, with uh, extremely low temperatures uh, at, at some places in the rocket, and uh, we have to, to, uh, to take care of that before we... We, we install the, the wires. Mm. Well, uh, looking at some of your work, uh, it's, it's meticulous uh, work and everything is, is strapped down and, and kept in place very rigorously. It's, uh, it's very, very orderly and uh, it's quite obvious to me that, that very little is left to, to chance. Uh, I guess that's usually because just one single broken wire and everything can go completely haywire. Well, oh, we try to avoid that. We have uh, redundancy in the in this wire harness. Uh, we have, uh, uh, for instance, we have uh, a power supply for the engine controller, and we have uh, two sets of wires for that. And we combine those those two at the engine controller. So should one wire break, uh, it won't uh, hmm. uh, mean a catastrophe for for the whole mission just because of one wire. And, we also have that redundancy for something like uh, a serial communication between the radio and, and the, the, the engine controller. Okay, so, so from all of these hazards you mentioned, uh, which one would you judge to be the, the most serious, serious one? What's the biggest danger to the, to the wire harness? Well, if, it, if we didn't use the wires that we do use, we use uh, wires with uh, Teflon insulation. If we didn't use those, but just standard PVC insulated wires, we would have a problem getting past the, the wires, uh, past the, the tank with the liquid oxygen, because that's down to minus 183 degrees centigrade. And uh, a PVC uh, wire insulation would get brittle and uh, would easily break up, uh, especially with uh, the vibration that we experience on, on the rocket mm. during launch. So two of those exposed wires and, yeah, we're in a bad situation. Yeah, it could, could lead to a short circuit and so on. Mm. Then we have this, uh, this nice little contraption here in front of us because uh, sometimes things turn out that, uh, that when you have to do a wiring harness, we don't really have a, an assembled rocket. No, I'm, uh, I'm usually doing the, the wire harness before the rocket is, is put together with the, all the, the modules that makes, makes, uh, make it up. So I, I have to rely on the drawings and then I uh, use cardboard tubing and uh, wooden boards to to make a mock-up of, uh, of the rockets mm -hmm. where, uh, where I can uh, place the, the different uh, wire entries in the, in the module so uh, that I make the, the, the high and harness the, the, the correct size. Mm -hmm. Well, can, can you uh, take us through this, uh, this mold? So if, if we start down we can, here at one end. Uh, this end is where the engine will be positioned and uh, the engine controller will, will sit here and uh, all the way down here we have the servos for the rudders, the jet vanes and uh, we have a, 
a couple of wires going down for the servos. They have both a uh, power supply and then a controlling signal for, for each servo. Uh, so that this is uh, the, these two pairs of wires. Uh, you can see the, the, the wires are, as mentioned, Teflon, and then they are placed inside a Teflon tube to yeah. keep them together so they won't uh, flap around. And then uh, we have a, a whole bunch of wires here. Yeah, I was looking to this because it, it sort of points out that the, the engine section is, is fairly heavily instrumented. Yes, it is. This is, uh, this is just the harness that goes from engine section and up to our avionics bay. And uh, the also, uh, so this is for communication and power supply between these two and the sensors we also have that's that's not made yet but we also have a harness that is entirely internal to the engine compartment with um, the, the sensors uh, placed down there. so this bundle here does this only interact with the engine controller in the engine bay yes this okay. is uh, for the engine controller the power supply the thick blue wires mm -hmm. And uh, this is for serial communication and for sensors. Uh, the sensors are placed on, on the tanks uh, for pressure and temperature. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, there's some wiring for the solenoids on the tanks. We have a, a vent valve on each tank that is driven from the en engine controller. Okay, so we have a whole lot of, of signals crisscrossing up and down the, the entire length of the rock. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, let's go a little further up here. The next open section here is uh this is where the lock tank will be placed. So this is where we have uh, the wires encapsulated in Teflon tubing uh, to to keep them together. We can't use wire uh, 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 normal uh, um, wire binders here. They would simply uh, uh, break because they you know, they'll get too too cold and they'll get brittle. Mm. So Normal zip ties are useless. Yeah, zip ties don't, don't work mm. here. So uh, when we are past the, the liquid oxygen tank, we get to the intertank uh, part on top of the, this one, uh, the LUX tank, and uh, the bottom of the fuel tank is here. Mm -hmm. And then we have some wires uh, exiting the harness here and entering the intertank. There's just a few there. That's not many, so. but uh, that's for, um, there's a temperature sensor, there's a, a pressure sensor, there's also the new uh, capacitive uh, uh, level sensor for, for the LUX tank. That's four wires. That it has serial communication and a power supply. Mm -hmm. And, and um, um, a cryogenic vent valve. That's all, yeah, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's the vent valve, that's also included, yes. I can see we're running out of room in that section anyway, so... Well, could be worse. <laughs> all right, so next tank, it's got to be next tank. This is the fuel tank that's placed here. We use uh, a braid here uh, to, to instead of the, the Teflon tubing, we, we go over to braid here. It's a, a bit lighter and uh, it doesn't have to... to uh, to uh, be uh, cold tolerant, so... Um, okay, we're back to, to room temperature up in yeah, this Yeah, we're end. back to, yeah. to normal ambient temperature here, and uh, it's, it's a bit easier to, to, to uh, pull the wires through the, the, um, these, these kind of tubes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're going to switch places because we're going to take the, the next upper section, and we're, we're a bit out of room up here. I'm, I'm out of the way up here. <laughs> then we get to the intertank above the fuel tank, mm -hmm. and that's placed below the new DPR section. And we have, um, as on the LOX tank, we have um, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, and the vent valve. Um, and this is also the place where we um, take the wires for the DPR section out of the harness. So we have the, the, the communication for the DPR section, we have two signals controlling the uh, high pressure valves, valves that um, uh, controls the, the helium entering the tanks and uh, also a, a main valve is up here and um, then there's a power supply that comes from the avionics uh, section and not from, from the engine controller so it comes 
from from the upper part. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, this the two uh, the two proportional valves, DPR valves, and the main valve for the DPR system. Which end controls those? That is controlled in the engine controller. Uh, okay. That's a part that is. Uh, it's actually part of the engine controller, but the algorithms controlling it is made by Fleming Nubu, who is you doing the guidance and navigation. But he's responsible for that part too. Mm. So he is part of a sort of he's sort of a, a renting a room in the engine controller to <laughs> to to use the the processing power down there. Mm. Well, okay, it's giving certainly an impression that that uh, a wiring harness, even for a, an X-ray rocket, that's that's not that trivial. It's not. Uh, the we have a a, a long a, a large XL um, uh, file for that, and it's something like uh, eight pages long, just for for this one. So finally, above the DPR tank, that's the very last section up there. That's, that's the end of the harness. I'll see if I can squeeze up here. And uh, this is where where the harness ends. Uh, that will be the bottom of the the avionics bay. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, four large connectors up there that connects the harness to to the to the boxes inside the avionics bay. That is. The guidance navigation computer, that which controls the servos. Mm -hmm. We have the power distribution box, which uh, is a link between the batteries and and uh, the different boxes, and also the the end controller. And then we have um, uh, this is also where um, the cable connecting the battery charge system to the uh, ground connector down at uh, the engine uh, uh, compartment we have a, 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 a connector down there mm. uh, where we supply power to the rockets yeah i, I vividly recall some of the uh, some of the feedback from from after last year's mission where the umbilical cable was attached actually at the bottom of the avionics uh, section so yes three four meters above the deck uh, a little more than three meters meters above deck, yes. Yeah, I, 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 we got a, a, a request for an alteration and a change here. So, yes, we we have uh, we have uh, because of that request, we have demanded that we have some room down at the engine hmm. business end where we can place a connector because we didn't have that last time. Yeah. Well, I guess this is uh, more or less an inspiration that you you seriously want to listen to what the electronics guys say. So, you better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bo, this has been really nice, and and thank you very much for walking us through this little bunch of wires, which is apparently a little more uh, exotic than than perhaps most people tend to think. There's a there's a bit more wiring than than you can see when the the rocket is assembled. Mm. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page. <laughs>